And here's a really good example how to draw the Lewis structure for, for, for phosphoric acid. The reason why I picked this as an example is because there's actually different ways in which you can draw Lewis structure and both ways will actually satisfy the octet rule and the number of valence electrons being used. But one is a preferable structure over another and we'll see in just a moment why that is. So let's start out with figuring out what kind of atoms we have in our, uh, uh, in our structure here. We have uh, hydrogen which of course has one valence electron and there's three of them so that gives us three valence electrons. We have uh, phosphorus which uh, has five valence electrons there's only one of those and then we have oxygen uh, which has six valence electrons and uh, that will times of course four that will give us um, uh, 24 valence electrons. The whole thing together is 32 valence electrons. All right, so what would we expect here? Okay, so phosphorus has the lowest electronegativity, and so therefore we expect that to be in the central of the structure. Now notice we could potentially draw it like this. We have a phosphorus in the middle. We can put an oxygen there. We can put an oxygen there. We can put another oxygen there, another oxygen there, then we can put a hydrogen on one end, a hydrogen on the other end, and a hydrogen on this end. Now notice why did I do that? Well notice that each oxygen has six valence electrons. It wants to make two bonds. When it makes two bonds, it can then take an electron and share with another atom. And so notice that this oxygen has two bonds, this oxygen has two bonds, this oxygen has two bonds, and this oxygen has two bonds. Notice the hydrogen is an appendage on either end over here and on over there as well. The only thing that's still missing is that phosphorus has five valence electrons. And notice that it only used three in the three bonds, so it probably has two more free electrons like that. And that may satisfy everything because, well, no, we're not quite done yet. Notice that with oxygen, it used two valence electrons to make the bonds, which means there needs to be two more valence electrons there and two more there. Same with this oxygen, like so. Same with this oxygen, like so. And same with this oxygen, like so. Okay, almost forgot the valence electrons there. Can't do that. All right, so now notice we have the octet rule satisfied here, satisfied there, satisfied for phosphorus, this oxygen, and this oxygen. All the hydrogens are satisfied because they're sharing two valence electrons. So now let's see the octet rule is satisfied. And also let's see if the valence electrons are satisfied. So we have four plus four plus two plus four plus four. So for all of the valence electrons, we're counted for those. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bonds, each bond containing two electrons. So seven times two is 14. And notice that 4 plus 4 plus 2 is 10, that's 18, that's 28, that's 32 electrons. And it looks like the electrons are satisfied as well. So, so notice that we have a perfectly legitimate structure here, but one rule that we haven't considered yet is somewhat violated. Here we have a very linear structure, and what we've seen is one of the basic rules is when we draw a Lewis structure is that the real way in which structures are formed, in which molecules are formed, is that they tend to be much more concentrated around the central atom. And this is a very linear structure, not likely to be found in nature. So let's see if there's another way in which we can form a structure that would, that would solve that one rule where we don't want to see linear structures but more compact structures. So if we do that, let's put the phosphorus atom in the middle and let's take the four oxygen atoms and put it around the phosphorus and see what we end up with in that particular case. So if we do that, we have one phosphorus here. We have an oxygen, an oxygen, an oxygen, and an oxygen. And of course, let's start with a single bond with each of those. Then don't forget we have three hydrogens and so we can put that on the other side of the hydrogen like this like this, like this, all right? And now we can see that these three oxygens have double bonds, one on each side. Actually, I shouldn't call them double bonds. They have a single bond on each side, but the two bonds make up for the additional two electrons that each oxygen wants. Remember, an oxygen has six valence electrons, so if it forms two bonds, one on each side, that now donates an additional electron to be shared, one with phosphorus, one with hydrogen, and so now we can see that the octet rule can be satisfied if we draw in the other four valence electrons. So when we do that, like so, you can see that this oxygen is now fully satisfied, and over here, this oxygen has eight valence electrons, 
and so does this one. And so you can see that those three oxygens are perfectly happy. As far as the hydrogens, they're happy as well because they share two electrons with this oxygen here, so they're satisfied. Notice that phosphorus started with five valence electrons, and it used four of those five valence electrons in bonds, which means it has one additional valence electron not accounted for. And notice since this oxygen only made one bond, it will then have five valence electrons left. Now notice that it's not likely that you end up with an uneven number of valence electrons, one here and five there. So what's probably going to happen here is that this electron is going to share with this electron and an additional bond is going to be formed. So what's going to happen is that these two will go away and form another bond. So let me redraw that over on the right side. So again, we have phosphorus here. We have the four oxygens. This is now going to form a double bond. These are three single bonds with a hydrogen on the other end, like so, leaving the four valence electrons on each oxygen, like so. Phosphorus now has five bonds, taking up the five valence electrons that it had, so phosphorus is in good shape, and this oxygen making two double bonds, or I should make a double bond, then has the four other valence electrons available like that, so now this follows the octet rule, 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 and this does not follow the octet rule. Notice that there's two, four, six, eight, ten valence electrons sharing the phosphorus uh, part of the time, which is not following the octet rule, but again, for third and fourth period elements, that is perfectly okay. We find that more often. Now let's see if the total electrons are satisfied, because if those are satisfied, then we probably have found ourselves the correct Lewis structure. So let's look for the uh, valence electrons. We have 2, 4, plus 4, plus 4 for this one, plus 4 for that one. So we have a total of 4, 4, 4, 4, or 16 valence electrons. Now let's count the bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bonds, each having 2 electrons. That's 8 times 2, that is 16. So we have 16 plus 16, which is 32 electrons used in all the bonding, which is the number of electrons we started with. So that is satisfied as well. So here's the question. Which rule would it rather adhere to? The fact that it rather have a compact structure versus a linear structure, giving up the octet rule for phosphorus, or would it rather keep all the octet rules but a linear structure? And in the end, what nature decides is that this is a energy more energy efficient structure and this is the proper structure for phosphoric acid. So interestingly enough, even though you might think that oh this is follows all the follows the octet rule and the valence electron rule, this is still the most predominant way in which the molecule will be formed, not this. So interestingly enough that seventh rule that we talked about in an earlier video that it rather forms a cluster structure rather than a linear structure, in this particular case, is the overriding rule that, that the molecule will want to follow. The Lewis structure for phosphoric acid.